So welcome to the uh, Digibyte session. So this is the next one in our series. Um, these are supposed to be brief, but this one might be slightly longer than the rest because we've got a lot of overlays to go through and look at. So we're going to look at the overlays within Digimap School. So there's some that cover both Great Britain and the United Kingdom, but there are also some historical data. And we can also look at the overlays for international mapping. So if you're new to Digimap Schools, this is the front page of Digimap Schools. So we're going to look at, let's look at the UK one. So the first one we're going to look at is I'm going to come over to the panel on the left-hand side. I'm going to come to GB overlays and I'm going to click on British National Grid. So this will overlay the British National Grid, the coordinate system we have in this country. So when you guys are doing four and six figure references, this is the um, grid we will use to do this. Now, there is a slightly longer video on the website, on the YouTube website, if you want to look through all the things we do around grid references, there are a couple of options there. But we can zoom in on our grid references and find our grid squares for our localities. And I'm going to zoom into the OSHQ here so we can start to see those on our map. So we can see our four and six figure grid references. And of course, we get the two letter prefix for a particular location. So let's go and type the OS po postcode. So... I can see my grid around my map. So when I want to do my grid work, I can do that. As I said, there's, there is a video if you want to go and watch a little bit more detailed information about the grid references. Now, as well as the grid reference tool for local maps, we also have a postcode layer. So one of the overlays, as we can see here, we can then add all the postcodes to our map. So if you're looking at post localities and what they cover and the areas, you can very easily overlay your postcode map. Now, if there's any key stage one and two teachers here, we have another layer. It's inappropriately called coloring because, of course, we don't color in in geography. But we call it our coloring in layer. So when I click on the coloring in layer, I can actually create a black and white version on the screen. So it means you can highlight this on your uh, using your tools or potentially you can print this off and use the black and white version when we're looking at what we call the coloring in one for local areas with your pupils. So those are the overlays immediately. So I'm going to zoom out and show you the boundaries one. So we also have a boundaries overlay. So I'm going to come a little bit further out to the UK here. And when I click on boundaries, this will give me the county boundaries and the local authority boundaries. So if you're looking at those with your pupils, looking at boundary information, you can see we can overlay all our boundaries for our counties and our local authorities in these localities. So you can add these to your map if you wish to. And again, you can print any of these overlays that we've just shown. So be that British National Grid, postcodes, boundaries, or your colouring in map. So I'm going to turn off my boundaries, going to zip back into the OSHQ. Uh, as well as those overlays for UK, what we also have using the map select tool, we can also look at historical data. So the first one I'm going to look at here, guys, I'm going to use the slider at the top, and I'm going to slide in the 1890s map. So we can view any location within Great Britain in the 1890s. So we can show these with your pupils. So you can start to look at these, looking at historical, uh, cross, little crossovers between history and geography with these. But we can view these for anywhere in the country. Now, a little bit of a limitation on these guys. These are from an old scanned image. And if you zoom in too far, you will see this message come up on your screen. And because it's from a an old scanned image, we just zoomed in too close, it would pixelate. So if you get this message where it says it's not available, you just need to zoom in or zoom out your map. What will happen is the map selector will be green. If it's gray, it means you can't use it at that particular level that you've zoomed in or zoomed out at. So we can look at the 1890s. We can also look at the 1950s for any locality. So we can compare across different eras using these historical overlays with your pupils and we also give you the aerial image so we can also view aerial images for locations again anywhere across great britain so you can start to use these with your pupils now on the gb overlays one here that also another options come up where it says road and place names so when you use your aerial overlay you also have the option that you can toggle on road and place names so if you if there's any key stage one teachers here you can start to use the start and put on place names and road names so you can just find where you are in a locality just by simply clicking on the road names place names on that particular overlay on the left hand side and a quick description of how the um, slider works for our historical overlays whatever radio button you put on the left will be when you slide it to the left 
Whatever one you put on the right will be when you slide it to the right. So on my map using these overlays, I can actually go from an 1890s map to a current aerial image and start to use and start to use those with our pupils looking again to compare place and location. So using the map selector box, we have a, a four different layers there, and we've looked at the GB overlays here on the left hand panel. So the other layers we've got here are really looking at global level. So let's put my map back on and I'm going to actually zoom out to show you the extent of the world. So over on the left hand, on the right hand side, sorry, you guys, underneath your plus and minus bar, there's a little icon. And when I click on that, that will zoom me out to show the extent of the world. So looking at my global mapping, I can show a locality globally like this. So I get a lovely physical view of the world. Now, this time using the map selector, I can actually change that to an atlas view. So you can actually use this particular tool to find and locate places globally across the planet. So we can see we've got Atlas or we can actually look at a physical view. Now, let's look at some of the layers that we've got or overlays that we've got on a global level. So I'm going to come to reference grids under my overlays panel here on the left. And the first one I'm going to overlay are the major lines of latitude. So I can put these on my map. So again, key stage two or key stage three teachers, if you're looking to explain what the globe looks like and you want to put those major lines on, i.e. the Arctic and Antarctic circles, as you can see, we've got the tropics and the equator, we can then overlay those on top of that global map to see their location on a global level. So you can do lovely geography things like how many countries does the equator go through and all that nice geography there. Now, what we can also do is we can overlay all the major lines of latitude. So if you want to start to look at latitude and longitude, we can overlay that on a global level as well. And again, you can zoom in on global localities and find the latitude and longitude places. But what we have, again, for our global levels, we have some brilliant overlays covering some physical and human geography. So the first one I'm going to show you, we're going to go to world, human, world physical geography. I'm going to click on volcanoes. And this will then overlay all the world's volcanoes on top of your map. So we can start to look at those. If you're looking at hazards, particularly looking at volcanoes, we can show these on a global level, as you can see here. Now we are working on a tool that will wrap the globe. So eventually we'll be able to see the ring of fire in its entirety. So that's coming hopefully sooner rather than later. More importantly, guys, on the left-hand panel, you can see we get the classifications of those volcanoes. So we can start to see the different types of volcanoes in your local in those localities globally when you're talking about hazards. Now, also, we got the option to add tectonic plates or tectonic plate boundaries. So if I add my tectonic plate boundaries, I can start to see those four different types across my map. So I can then start to look at the implications of volcanoes on fault lines. Again, a nice bit when I'm looking at hazards. Or if I turn off my volcanoes and my tectonic plates and this time click on tectonic plates, I can actually see those appropriate plates and how they're divided up. And using the transparency layer, then I can fade those out. So I can then see the countries underneath, but start to see those plates and their appropriate naming of those plates on my map. So you have a transparency slider for each one of these overlays, which you can use so you can see those. Now, another really nice layer is we have mountain ranges. So we can then overlay all the world's major mountain ranges. You can see those on our map here. So if you're looking at mountain ranges, maybe you're looking at volcanoes and looking at the investigation, do we find volcanoes and mountainous localities and start to do that with your pupils. Now, a really nice one, guys, linked into some physical geography, our world biomes. So we can look at the vegetation classifications as collected by the WWF, as we can see here, and we can see the vegetation types on a global level for any country. So again, using the transparency layer, I can fade that back a touch. I'm going to zoom in a bit to Brazil. So if any of you guys are doing Brazil as your um, country you look at abroad, we can see not only do we see tropical rainforests in a location, but we can also see there are other types of vegetation within this location and start to explore those. Now I'll just bring the transparency barrier back there a touch. And again, if I go back to my reference grids, which we mentioned at the start, and overlay major lines of latitude, can we see if all the tropical rainforests follow the equator? So you can mix and match how we want to use these particular um, overlays and using those transparency layers, we can then fade them in and out to show that information. So those are the ones we've got for physical geography. So we're going to look at some human geography. 
So I can click on population density and then I get detailed population area or population map for locations. And again, I get a key here on the left hand panel to show what those are. So, of course, you can start to explore looking at India and China and Australia and we can come into our locality. So we can come into the UK, look at populated locations. And again, if I fade back the transparency as such, we can start to see major cities and start to see the population patterns in our country. But you can do that again for global. So if we come across to Europe, we'll see Paris, we'll see into Brussels, into Prague, Berlin, et cetera, et cetera. But we can use these to look at population information on a global level. I mean, you can also, we could then put on our mountain ranges and fade those in and look at where mountains locations are and population patterns and use the transparency layers to fade between the two in a location now we also have world time zones so we can overlay detailed time zone maps for the for a global location as you can see here so we can start to see use those key stage two teachers time zones are specifically mentioned in the key stage two curriculum so we can start to look at those time zone elements and again at key stage three you can start to look at these and start to look at hemispheres day and night and those things global uh time zones is a little bit of maths so can you start to look at places and locations and find the time zones for these localities but this is a brilliant layer to be able to share with your pupils now where we get this global data from is from uh, a service called OpenStreetMap. Now, OpenStreetMap is a crowdsource data set. Um, and as you can see, as I start to zoom in on this, at my global level here, I see English equivalents and names. But when we come into more detailed maps, this one in particular, Japan, you will see all the text is in Japanese. So how this data is collected, it's collected in the native tongue. So whenever you look at global locations, if you're looking at somewhere like Japan, all that text will be in Japanese. Now, what I can do on the left hand side here, guys, is a little button that says world place names, and it will then overlay the translations in English of those Japanese names. So if we're looking at another global country that doesn't use the same alphabet as us, we can use that world place names to overlay those localities when we're looking at our global map. So it's a way to be able to use those global levels and looking at detailed information for those places that are not necessarily in the English alphabet. So when we zoom back out, guys, I'm going to come back out here to the outline map of the UK, turn on my country layer instead. And one of the really good layers we've got as well, guys, overlays our climate detail. So we can start to talk about climate information, how that impacts on us globally, looking at historical temperatures across global locations. But we can also look at future temperatures as well. So you can see we've got a couple of historical layers, 1970 here to 2000, 2010 to 2018. So I'm going to toggle that one on so I can see those levels. And again, using my transparency layer, I can fade those back to look at countries. Uh, now, what I'm going to do on the screen here, guys, is I'm going to actually start to fade in those max projected temperatures. So we can see these are the global temperatures from 2010 to 2018. And as I start to fade in what we call the max projected temperatures from the climate people, we start to see what the impacts of that might be. So when you start to talk about climate and global temperature change, you can start to show the averages at certain periods, but also look at what's the projected temperatures in the future. We've got one here for the minimum projected temperatures and one for the max. Now, of course, these might not definitely happen, but it's looking at those scenarios of what if these were to happen in the future. So you can use these fantastic overlays. And then you also have the same for precipitation. So we can look again, historical periods for precipitation. So we can look at 2010, uh, 1970, sorry, to, 20, uh, to 2000. And we can also then look at the max projected of those precipitations. So set, can we see how that's going to impact potentially across tropical rainforests and again across the data and look at those layers. So you've got some fantastic overlayers overlays using these so we've got some gb ones as we mentioned we've mentioned national grid we've looked at county boundaries postcodes our coloring in maps we've got historical across two different eras we've got aerial imagery we've got the physical geography which covers um volcanoes tectonics mountains and biomes human geography looking at both english place names population and time zones and those global layers and just to finish this up guys if you click on the print button at the top 
anything you see you can print in this low in this particular tool so if you will print a global map with all those temperatures on print that out and use it with the pupils you can you can add drawings so you can add your pictures etc to your map and then print with those as well so guys that's our digibytes a uh, little uh, episode there on overlays so i'm going to hang around for the next few minutes if any of you guys have got any questions please shout in the chat more than happy to answer those questions at the top guys are the help pages so if you want to look at the overlays we can see them in here so we can start to look at using those as well so guys that's the digi digibytes one come and have a look at the other ones if you haven't seen them